better cloud platform services like MongoDB on cloud, which is known as MongoDB Atlas. There are so many other cloud database platforms. After that, let's get started with the front end. What is front end? Just a second. Yep. So talking about front end, front end, like front end is the human interaction layer. So if you are surfing any Flipkart, Amazon, or any kind of website or any mobile phone application. So front end is something with, with which you guys interact and all the data, whatever it is present on the database are required or uh, are generally uh, comes on the front end to serve you. Okay. So this is uh, like, this is pretty much about front end, but now onwards we will talk about the, like we will learn this whole full stack thing in terms of web, not in terms of app because uh, otherwise it will get messy and uh, you might get confused. But yeah, if you are having any question related to app development, then you can also put it in the chat box and uh, we will definitely try to answer your questions. Okay. So now if you, if you want to become a front end web developer, then what are the things which you should learn? So there are three things which are the must. The first one is HTML. Second one is CSS and third one is JavaScript. HTML represents hypertext markup language. Okay. What is the role of HTML? So HTML holds the content. So let's say this is a website and uh, this is a, this is some kind of text which is present on this website. Then HTML holds the content which is present over here. Okay. HTML holds the content which is present over here. So this is the main role of HTML. CSS helps you to style your whole front end. CSS, the full form of CSS is cascading style sheet. So, <clears throat> so CSS helps you to style the, uh, whatever it is there on front end, like all the color present in the right corner, background color, font size, font color, font style. All these are coming on our front end because of CSS after that JavaScript. So JavaScript provides you functionality. So in case you want to animate this text, then you can use JavaScript. In this platform, they use JavaScript. So these are some key. are only possible uh, in JavaScript. So this is one of the very uh, common question which generally people ask in internships, like internship interviews. After that, now we will talk about frameworks for building front end web. So for building front end web, uh, there are n number of frameworks present out there in the market, but one of the most famous framework is react and angular. So if you guys have, like, if you guys ever tried for searching for internship, or if you guys have ever interacted with any senior, then he might have, like, he, I am damn sure that he might have advised you to go with react JavaScript that yeah, yeah, bro, you should learn react JavaScript because market is having a huge demand for react developers. So you guys might have heard these kind of terms from your seniors or from anyone who is into full stack development or who is into front end development. So what is the key? Like what is the key USP, which reacts, which react provides you or all these frameworks provides you. So the main USP, which is delivered by all these frameworks is that. So let me explain this thing from example. So let's say you are building a five page website. Okay. Five page website. So whenever you will jump from first page to the second, whenever you will navigate from first page to the second, then page reloads. Okay. But the main thing is that the footer and the nav bar, the top bar stays same in each and every page. Then why should I reload these components again and again? Like it's like, it's none of like, it's none of my use that why should I reload it again when I have already reloaded it on my first page. So all these frameworks is having a USP where they provides you a open end to break your whole front end into multiple components, right? And only those components will reload, which are different in the first page and the second page. 
so only the different components like the components which are not like which are unique in the first twist compared to the second will reload and all the similar component will stay there uh, until unless they get any kind of uh, replacement from the next phase right so this is the main usp of all these uh, like most of the frameworks that they provides you a open end to break down your website into multiple components and reload only those components which are unique from first page to the second page right after that uh like then why there are so many frameworks when only there is a single usp so there are multiple reasons multiple usps which they share uh, like which they are having uh, individually like angular came into the picture uh, google invented angular and like this is a fun fact google invented angular and uh, react was invented by facebook okay so uh, if you are if you use youtube then uh, youtube is built on angular okay and if you are using facebook then it is built on react right now so the next thing uh, what is the main difference between angular and react uh, because they are one of the most because they are the most famous framework right now trending in the market so if you are building anything which is having a google ecosystem like if you are integrating if you are planning to integrate google pay google maps and so many other services related to google then you should go with angular but if you are trying to if you are planning to integrate so many things which are third party based like razor pay twilio uh, paytm and all these kind of third party uh, uh, services then you should go with react because react is very good with third party services but angular is not that much good with it and uh, apart from that why vue js came into the picture so vue js came because uh, it made learning react very easy so vue js is very easy to understand very easy to learn so that's why vue js came into the picture after that there was one more framework uh, there is one more framework which is very much trend in these days which is known as next js so next js is nothing but uh, it is based on react javascript it is a modified version of react javascript and these days it is gaining more popularity than react so the main reason is server side rendering so if you are using next js then nothing will render on your chrome browser so this helps your chrome browser stay very light and uh, it helps chrome to uh, like it will because of next js your chrome browser will never crash because everything will render on the server side and chrome browser is used only for presenting the data so that's why uh, next js came into the picture there are n number of frameworks which are will like which i have never used and which i have never heard about so you can search it on google or you can also search it on chat gpt so if you are planning to build any kind of project just go on chat gpt uh, put your requirements and ask chat gpt that which is the best framework for building my front end and uh, it will definitely give you some satisfactory answer right so but yeah these these are some uh, uh, keyword like uh, key usps which all these uh, frameworks are having if you will ask me personally that which is the best skill which i should pursue for my future then i would highly recommend you to go with react because react is having a huge market now coming towards back end what is back end so the the back end is like engine which fetches the data from database but yeah this is just a theoretical text uh, and i would not recommend you to read this but i would like to teach you this thing with an example so before understanding back end let's understand what is api so before understanding back end you need to understand what is api so the full form of api is application programming interface right so let's take a scenario of restaurant where there is a dining area and there is a kitchen area and there is a waiter who acts like an intermediator between the kitchen and the dining area between the customer right so what is the role of uh, this waiter so the role of this waiter is to uh, ask customers prepare a memo deliver it back to the kitchen take the dish from kitchen and deliver deliver it back to the customer right so waiter is acting as an intermediator similarly api is that intermediator which uh, takes all the data from database processes it delivers it to the front end takes all the data from front end processes it and delivers it back to the database right so this is the role of api so let's say you are on flipkart.com 
you're trying you are trying to do sign up for flipkart then you are putting all the data over there right so whenever you put all the data there is one api working behind it which uh, takes all the data and uh, submits it to the database similarly if you are trying to search for uh, mobile phones on flipkart uh, then uh, it fetches all the data of mobile phones like if you are searching for mobile phones it fetches all the data of mobile phone from database and delivers it back to you on front end so there are n number of apis there are thousands of apis working behind flipkart.com for taking your data from front end to the database and uh, from uh, taking some data from database to the front end right so there are n number of apis working behind that uh, uh, flipkart.com or any e-commerce or any kind of project right so what is backend so backend is nothing but uh, you can say collection of apis which are which are running right so generally if you want to build a backend you need two things firstly the runtime environment where your server will run and uh, api where all the logical part are kept so let's say you are trying to build a e-commerce so and you are building e-commerce on monstack i guess you guys are already aware about monstack monstack is uh, one of the most popular framework these days so let's say you are trying to build something on monstack then uh, uh, in monstack m represents mongodb which is a database and uh, e r n e represents express r represents react and n represents node so node and express are used for building the backend out of which node provides you the runtime environment and express provides you functionality to write all the logics all the logics for your api right so uh if you are building any kind of backend on any framework these are the two key things the runtime environment and the api api consists all the logical part all the logical code of uh, like all the logical part and uh, runtime is something where your server will run where your api will run uh, a runtime environment provides you the uh, environment where your all the apis uh, will be running right now coming towards the backend frameworks so if you are building backend then you can use there are n number of frameworks present in this uh, ecosystem you can go with any one of them but if you are building on react like if you are building on javascript then you should go with uh, node and express if you are building on python you should go with uh, django and flask if you are building on uh, uh, like uh, java then you need to go with spring boot and i guess uh, if you are building on dotnet then you need to go with laravel for php cake php and there are a number of frameworks but what are the usps of all these frameworks so if you are building a basic uh, basic level full stack project which is going to handle somewhere around 10000 people not more than that or like lack of people then you can go with monstack like express and node but if you are building very huge scalable project with million of user then you need to go with java because if you are building very huge projects you should go with core languages like java do you know uh, that uh, aws is built on java so uh, you you need to go with uh, java but if you are building something where there is huge involvement of uh, ai ml uh, and python language then you should go with django so every like every framework is having its own usp and own use cases but yeah uh, if you are planning to uh, if you are planning to build any project then i would highly recommend you to uh, do some research before choosing the tech stack but if you are planning to like if you are learning just for pursuing any internship or placement then i would highly recommend you to go with monstack express and node for building your backend so uh, these are few things about backend now let's get into database okay so talking about database there are two there are two things like there are like there are i guess seven or eight kind of databases present in this uh, ecosystem which are generally used uh, like sql no sql uh, there are few more like uh, graph ql db there are so many kind of databases but the wide the most like the widest used databases are sql database and no sql database 
these two databases are the widest like wide, one of the most popular uh, database so let's understand what is the key difference between sql and no sql so in sql databases like mysql postgres sql there are so many type of sqls but the main concept behind sql database is tabular form of data so if you are planning to build a database of 10 students of with a name mobile number date of birth then you will create a table like structure and you will put all the data over there where each uh, each and every student will be having its data in form of rows first row second row third row fourth row and so on right but if you are building something on uh, like if you want to build database put your database in form of no sql then uh, there is the form which is known as document and collections so you need to put your data in form of documents and collection where each student's data will be kept in a single document and uh, the collection of this document will be termed as collection so let's say my data name mobile number date of birth will be in the first document hardik's name mobile number uh, date of birth will be in the second document and so on so on and all these documents kept together will be called as collection so this is the main concept behind uh, the data like this is the main uh, structure which uh, is used or which is over there in no sql databases okay now what is the key difference what is the competitive advantage between sql and no sql so sql is little bit slow as compared to no sql and uh, advantage for sql is that it helps you to provide create relations relations between data but uh, no sql uh, doesn't provides you that functionality it becomes very difficult for us to create relations in a database okay now the next thing so the next thing is that let me explain this thing with uh, with an example so let's say if you are browsing flipkart.com so flipkart keeps all its product data or amazon pro amazon keeps its all product data in no sql database because it need to deliver all the data in very quick manner within a point of second so whenever you are search for any you are searching for mobile phone response must be within points points of second right so uh, this can only become possible if you are using no sql database so uh, all the e commerces use no sql database for uh, building their uh, for building the, like for keeping all the data of product uh, so generally they keep all the uh, data of product in no sql databases after that if uh, <clears throat> like after that all the e-commerce keeps their payments data in tabular form in sql databases like all the flipkart and amazon keeps their uh, data payments data or uh, like uh, amounts like all the mrp uh, discount percentage discount price credit card offer all these kind of data in sql databases because before calculating the total amount of product total amount of uh, purchase there must be some relations which they have to perform after calculate before calculating the total price so that's why uh, it is important to keep all the data in sql database because they need to perform so many uh, plus minus divisions and multiple calculations so all these relations can only be uh, like all these relations are only possible in sql databases so that's why they use sql for keeping all the uh, price related data Now what is cloud <clears throat> so cloud is nothing but a giant computer with a huge number of processors ram storage and graphics okay and uh, anyone can rent some virtual computers on that huge computer so you can see a uh, example of uh, example of that in this one screen so there is a huge computer which is kept somewhere in somewhere in uh, any part of this globe which is having a huge a huge amount of configurations a huge amount of uh, power and you can rent some virtual computers according to your need on that one huge computer and you just need to access that computer remotely okay so <clears throat> in case uh, so let's say you want to play a game which is not supported in your pc because your pc is not having that much of sufficient configuration then you can rent a 
server you can rent a virtual server on that cloud computer you can install that one game in that one computer and that game will run over there and you just need to remotely access it from your computer right and the main usp of these virtual computers is, computers are that you can host your web websites over there so because your website need to be live 24/7 right so it is very difficult to keep your computer live 24/7 with stable internet connection and stable electricity so that's why people deploy their projects deploys their uh, website code on uh, virtual servers so that it could stay live whole day 24/7 right apart from that uh, any cloud service like all the cloud platform provides n number of services like uh, i would like to uh, explain more about aws because i have used because i'm having experience with aws and uh, aws is marketing uh, like the market's only leader google cloud is also very much famous microsoft azure is also very much famous but i'm having personal experience with aws so i would like to tell more about aws and uh, along with that aws is market's only leader right now so after that uh, what are the services which aws provides so aws provides you database services you can rent cloud databases like sql database or no sql database on aws apart from that you can rent some storage like google drive you guys might have used google drive you guys generally use google drive in your daily life similarly aws also provides you a function like a, a service which is known as aws s3 bucket which provides you a huge amount of storage which you can rent on monthly basis so uh, that thing is also very much uh, famous and uh, it is very fast as compared to google drive apart from that <clears throat> uh, i have used aws pinpoint which is used for bulk mailing bulk messaging and all these kind of services so these are few services which i have used but apart from that uh, generally all almost every cloud platform provides so many other services like uh for performing some computations for doing some data analytics and all these kind of services there are three major leaders in this uh, cloud ecosystem the first one is aws and there are two more leaders like google cloud and microsoft azure aws is in general famous microsoft azure is famous in enterprise versions like big companies use microsoft and uh, google is famous if you are building anything related to if you are building something which is very much inclined towards google's ecosystem okay so this is pretty much about uh, all the cloud platforms now uh, coming towards dozer so you guys might now you guys have seen that there are so many things which is required to learn for becoming a full stack developer and especially the back end is one of the most difficult thing which takes somewhere around 5 months to 6 months to understand and in order to build your first project so it consumes your huge time so if you if you will use dozer then it will minimize that 6 month of effort to just 10 10 minutes of effort so dozer simplifies your whole process of building backend now i would like to hand over this thing to hardik and he will be explaining you more about how dozer works and how it will simplify your this whole backend journey over to you hardik Yeah, thank you, Ankit, for explaining the whole full stack development process and the whole architecture of it. Now let's start with uh, what Dozer is and uh, how it is actually helping, you, how it can actually help you to build a simple full stack application, right? And how much time does it actually take, uh, as compared to the whole uh, basic uh, backend development and with Dozer, right? So starting with the basic. Um, uh, definition of it so dozer is used to connect any data source to instantly get low latency data apis with just a simple dot yaml configuration so with the definition we can understand that uh, dozer gets connected to our databases and uh, it just gives you a low latency data apis right with uh, just a simple uh, dot yaml configuration we'll show you the uh, how that configuration looks um let's understand this how, in a basic architecture that ankit has uh, explained earlier so next slide ankit yeah here comes the basic architecture so we have the database where we put all the data uh we have the front end so any website any application uh, you open the very first thing you see is the front end part right uh it's basically where you interact with right then comes the back end or the apis which actually takes the data from the database to the front end 
and it goes from forward to back, uh, and backward, right? It takes the data from front end to and uh, put it in the database, right? Take an example of uh, you providing the data in any website to just sign in, right? You just provide your email, you just provide your name and the data goes from front end to to the database, right? It gets stored in the database. So this is how the basic architecture looks. And let's understand, uh, let's see how much time does it actually take uh, for a developer to actually learn database, then uh, front end, then we'll go to the back end part, right? Starting with the database. So we have two types of, da types of databases. First is NoSQL, second is SQL. So NoSQL, in a NoSQL database, the uh, data are being stored in a file and folder format right just take an example uh, you have downloaded something any pdf any documentation or any excel sheet uh, from google chrome right and uh, where it is going to be stored it is stored in c drive inside that you can find a folder called downloads inside that you can see your folder uh, your file that you have downloaded right so it's inside the c c drive inside the downloads folder and you got the file right so the main there's a big uh, folder then there's a, a child folder and then there is a data right in no sql database it's called the collection then document and then there's the data right so this is the basic architecture of how uh, things are getting stored in no sql database so some of the examples are mongodb dynamodb firebase elasticsearch cockroach db things change a little bit uh, from database to database uh, because they have their own USPs. But uh, yeah, this is the basic. Um, you will find similar data, this similar structure in these uh, NoSQL databases, right? Then coming to the SQL part, you, uh, you have seen the table format, right? Where data are being stored in a rows and columns format, right? So that's how the data are being stored in a SQL format. So some examples are MySQL, PostgreSQL, MSSQL, and MariaDB. Right? So it generally takes uh, for you to just uh, take any data and put it in any database mentioned over here or any else uh, database. It just takes you one day or one week to actually learn how to put any data in a database. Right? So yeah, coming to the front end part where you have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. As Ankit has mentioned, Ankit, uh, HTML is used to hold the data. CSS is used to do the styling part that you can see all the styling has been done in this uh, GDSE community screen, right? And also in the Canva screen that you can see. So the CSS part does the styling part. Uh, the JavaScript is actually does the logical things, right? Basically the functionalities, uh, let's say there are any buttons. Yeah, we have mute button, we have stop video button we have a leave button right so these are the these are, when we click on that there are some functionalities uh related to it right related to those buttons so it generally takes one week to one month or it can uh to actually learn the front end the basic front end let's say you want to build a simple clone of youtube right just the front end part not the functionalities of it so it just takes uh like two to three weeks to actually learn uh, to build a simple clone website, right? So the more you do it, the more better you get at it uh, for the front end part. And same goes with the back end. Now let's uh, move on to the back end part and uh, see how much time does it actually take to learn back end and why is that the case, right? Starting with the runtime environment, you actually have to set the environment uh, to run the back end, right? Then the logical coding uh, comes in. What the log logical coding is. Um, taking an example of Amazon website, right? So uh, when you open it, you can see the front end, right? You see the uh, pictures of different products, you see the price and the name of those products, and you see different suggestions, right? The posters and the banners, you see those things. There are uh, logical coding, uh, there are logics written behind it, right? Let's say you are more interested in uh, shoes and from the past one week or two weeks, you are uh, searching for different shoes where yeah, you're looking for different shoes and uh, there are logical uh, coding logics written that uh, this guy is looking for uh, shoes right so uh, there would be more suggestions related to shoes right and not uh, any hat or any t-shirt right so that's the logical part is then comes to the optimization part why optimization is needed let's say you uh, uh, there's a button called uh, buy now button what it should do 
it should be doing uh, when you click on buy now button it should be directed to the checkout page where your product is being added to the cart and uh, you should see a screen where you should you should be adding your details right your personal details so this is the general scenario right now if your code is not being optimized it might take 5 to 10 seconds to actually go to that page right or it might uh, direct you to the cart page right so that's why the optimization is very uh, crucial for a backend for building backend right uh, yeah same goes with the security part security the data are being uh, carried uh, through apis from the back end to front end and front end to back end they, they carry your data your personal details and the payment details too so that's why security is very important and it generally takes one month to one six months even more than that to actually master uh, back end uh, the reasons are written over here right i've also explained it so yeah it generally takes six months or maybe more than that to actually uh, implement with the e-commerce website or maybe a social media uh, website right so let's see how dozer can actually help you build a simple uh, full stack application within 10 minutes right so as i have explained earlier it just uh, you just need to create a dot yaml file let's go to the next slide and see how uh, that the dot yaml file looks yeah we have two images here let's start with the left hand side uh, this is the simple YAML configuration where you just have written that uh, there's a connection called, uh, you can see config local storage. So your data has be, is present in the local storage. It's uh, SQL data. So you just just written that connection. I have a database. You're just mentioning Dozer that uh, I have a data uh, base in my local PC, right? And uh, it the table name is XYZ. Uh, here it is mentioned, uh, what's that? Trips, yeah. So the table name is trips and you have mentioned the columns and uh, yeah you are just mentioning the these this is my database this is the table this is the column and just bring my data and in the right hand side you can see uh, after all the things dozer is doing in the back end uh, not you you just written this uh, code 20 to 30 lines of code and dozer is uh, processing everything and giving you uh, an api response right so if you have ever uh, seen any api giving response this is how it should look right it actually looks so yeah it generally takes 10 minutes to actually learn and uh, write this simple dot yaml file it, it's even simpler than learning how to put data in your database right so yeah so i'm not going to show you the tutorial how you can just actually create dot yaml file uh in this particular session i'll do that later so if you have already opened the form google form that we have shared um, we have asked you to start our repo and uh, yeah if you start a repo in the coming days we are working on the whole course of full stack development with closer right so once we get that published you can get the free access to it and yeah if you haven't started us or uh, filled the form just go ahead and do that a link is already in the chat now coming back to the basic architecture how it is actually getting changed with closer right so earlier it was database backend and frontend now the database is there the frontend is there and uh, you don't have to do the hassle to actually write the whole uh, apis right so you just write 10 to 20 lines of code that is dozer configuration and that's it you can just bring any data from the database to the frontend that's it that's all you have to do so just let us know how interesting the, the this sounds uh, we have already asked you the question on the Google form. Ankit, if you go to the next slide and eventually open the Google form, so I can just uh, show them. Yeah, just a second. Let me yeah. present my full screen. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the Google form. So. Starting with the first three questions, uh, the very first question, which some of the following companies started React, and Kit has already mentioned that earlier, right? Uh, full stack development comprises of, we have shown you the basic architecture of it, so you might have guessed it. Now, which among the following is the most popular cloud provider? So we had a separate uh, slide for that too. Now comes how easy do you think uh, Dozer could be? 
for a full stack application, right? So we have just give you a theoretical explanation. So based on that, just let us know. So if you just put 10, it doesn't increase your chance to get a t-shirt. We just want a genuine uh, response from you. And yeah, going uh, coming to the starring part, you, you yeah, we are working on that uh, full stack development course. And also we will share a resource sheet to everyone who just put your details in the form, right? So yeah, that's it. And uh, now we have some FAQ questions that we get from a lot of students and uh, we have curated that and put it in a, a question on answer format. So I'll be the question, I'll be asking the questions to Ankit and Ankit will be answering that. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can just ask us in the chat. I can see a few questions. Uh, so Ankit has already explained it. Uh, no, he'll take it at the end, right? So. Yeah, let's start with the FAQ. And uh, if your questions are not here, then you can ask us in the chat, right? Both ways. Uh, so let's start with the questions, right, Ankit? So yep. starting with the first question, why full stack development is uh, actually better than front end development? Does it actually help me get an internship? How much is the demand for a full stack developer as compared to a front end developer? And uh, what's the pay gap between internship and a full-time for both uh, uh, full stack developer and a front-end developer. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, so the first question, why full stack development is better. So it's self -ex uh, explanatory that full in full stack development, front-end development is automatically considered, right? So the question is self explanatory, but after that, uh, does it help in getting internship? Then definitely full stack development opens more like like more number of doors for you. So full stack development is definitely a win-win situation for you guys uh, as compared to those who are uh, only into front-end development. After that, how much uh, is the demand for a full stack developer as compared to a front-end developer? So in market, if there are 100 opportunities for front-end developer, then only 10 opportunities are there for full stack development. But talking about the supply, then if there are 100 opportunities for front end, then there are 110 people who are eligible. So market is very much cluttered in front end part. But talking about full stack, if there are only 10 opportunities, then there are only three or four or let's say five or six developer are there who are having that much of skill. So in uh, full stack development, market is not having like in market supply is very less, but in front end development supply is very high. So <clears throat> in short, Full stack development opens more number of doors for you. After that, what is the pay scale in internship and full time? So for front end developer, uh, firstly, let's talk about front end development. So in front end development, while internship, you get 5,000 to 30,000, uh, depending upon company. And, uh, in full time, uh, you get three lakh to seven lakh of package. This is the total, uh, package gap, uh, for front end side. Now talking about back end or full stack side. So in full stack development generally uh, while internship persons get from minimum of 10000 to a maximum of 75000 and uh, for full time job they get somewhere around 8 lakh to maximum of 30 lakh and i'm only talking about normal companies i'm uh, not considering all the fang companies because they have different criteria different limitations and different parameters right so these are some first set of questions. Now moving towards second. Coming to the second question. So, uh, Ankit, how uh, to get an internship as a full stack developer? Also tell me how to get an internship uh, as a front end developer too, right? So does it actually help my portfolio putting a, putting a uh, full stack uh, project? Does it actually help my portfolio? How to actually present it in my resume, right? And uh, what are the platforms would you recommend to get an internship easily? Okay. Nice. So, uh, how to get internship as a full stack developer? So first set of question. Like, so like the first sub question is that, do it help my portfolio? Then yeah, if full stack development is present in your portfolio, then definitely you are going to get more number of opportunities and, uh, your resume will de definitely will get highlighted automatically after that, how to present it in my resume. Then if you are planning to build a resume with full stack development, then you should put at least one personal project based on e-commerce or a social media. 
because if you are if you are having skills for e-commerce or social media then it directly signifies that you are having all the concepts very clear crystal clear in your mind because e-commerce and social media uh, uh generally uses all the concepts of full stack development almost every concepts are automatically uh, used in these two domains after that what are the platform from where i can get the internship easily so what are the platform uh, okay so generally people use internshala internshala is a platform where you can search for internship but these days internshala is into little bit of controversy so like like there are so many fake companies also present over internshala so apart from using internshala you can use uh, qbet tech there is a company uh, there is a platform which is known as qbet tech c u v e double t t e c h qbet tech so qbet tech is a platform where you can search n number of internships related to full stack development uh, and definitely this that platform is very genuine and uh, only verified companies are present over there so you can uh, easily get an internship you, if you are having sufficient sufficiently good resume now coming towards the set of question yeah coming to the last question that we have so uh, how do you think we should start to get started with the full stack development right what are the frameworks we should choose and uh, what course would you recommend and what resources would uh, you recommend uh, for a full stack developer to follow right and which operating system should uh, one prefer if they want to become a hardcore developer okay nice question so firstly which framework to choose so if you are building something for yourself for your own interest then you should do research on uh, like you should do research on your project like uh, what kind of what kind of project you are building and all these kind of stuff which one tech stack is better for you but if you are planning for any internship or placement then i would highly recommend you to go with uh highly recommend you to go with uh, monstack because monstack is having so many opportunities like monstack opens multiple number of doors for you because there are so many opportunities for monstack developers after that which course and resource do i pick so i have met with many students and i have seen a common course which generally every developer have followed before entering into this full stack development ecosystem the name of course is angela u full stack web development it is present on udemy angela u y u u full stack web development course it is the high like uh, it is one of the best seller courses since from i guess last 5 or 6 years on udemy you can also download it somewhere from like i'm i'm not promoting piracy but you guys are well trained in that so you can search it uh, anywhere else also but yeah that course is one of the best course for uh, uh, starting your journey with for like for starting your journey with full stack development right <clears throat> uh, after that uh, which operating system should i prefer if i want to become a hardcore developer so if you are building your project only for executing on your pc then windows is good enough or any operating system is good enough but if you are planning to deploy it over cloud then generally cloud uh, generally have linux environment so if you are building on windows and you are deploying in linux environment then there might be some package conflicts or there might there might be some misbehaviors which you can see after deployment so that's why companies provide mac operating system and linux operating system to their employees because generally uh, cloud of like on cloud there is a linux environment so you need to like you need to develop in that environment so that there might be a bug free software so there so there should be a bug free software which should be deployed over a uh, cloud right so that's why uh, i would highly recommend you to go with uh, mac os or a linux operating system if you are building something for real users which real users are going to use but if you are building for yourself for your portfolio for hackathons then windows is more than enough it's good enough okay uh and uh, these are some like uh, we are done with all the questions but there was a guy who was asking something about typescript but uh, before that let me un- read the rest of the questions so firstly uh uh these are some uh, i have already shared all the uh, usps which typescript is having but uh, i will discuss all of them one by one but let me read rest of the questions 
what is your experience with implementing security in both the front end and back end of the web application can you explain the concept of content management system cmm cms and uh, popular cmss i am not having any experience with cms but uh, yeah i can talk about the like uh, security thing and about the typescript thing uh, content management system i guess uh, like i have never used it but uh, before talking this uh, i was working as a product manager with a company uh, since from last one year so i am having so many of practical exa- like practical experience uh, let me f- stop my screen presentation first yeah so before proceeding uh, i i was telling that i am having some experience as a product manager where my main role was to do research and uh, find be- best tech stacks and uh, research about all the things which are required for building a full stack e-commerce project so there i got a lot of information and so many i got so many new things to learn so after uh, taking all those uh, information i would like to answer all these uh, like i'm having those information and experience so i am going to answer everything by relating from my uh, previous company experience okay so the first question was uh, typescript so i have shared few usps of typescript like uh, static typing object or like uh, let me like it got cluttered but let me explain you in a simple manner so the main usps of typescript is that firstly it helps you it provides you a type safe environment uh, what is this so you can define your variables while coding so like yeah all kind of variables while coding what is the wh- how this thing helps you so this thing helps you in the manner that whenever you are compiling your code you will get all the error what all the potential error not while run time so this is the main usp of typescript that you will get all the errors while run time not after deployment and uh, while uh, people are using so this is the best thing which people uh, get uh, like which people uh, are getting benefited because of this typescript apart from that community is very big so people get very easy answers whenever they get stuck anywhere after that there are so many other tools which are present with which are plugins which are present with the coding uh, like with your vs code or any code editor which helps you to directly uh, uh, like helps you to improve your code enhance your coding experience there are so many ide supports after that uh, <clears throat> what are the next points which i have mentioned so compatibility so one of the most important thing so if you are building on react then you can very easily switch into typescript without any that much of hassle so this is also a usp which uh, typescript provides uh, code maintainability so uh, if you are uh, so like if you are building something on typescript then you can maintain your code very easily and there are so many other uh, usp is too but the main usp is server side rendering and uh, it provides you the type safe thing uh, due to which all the errors happens while uh, your com- compilation not while run time so these two are the main usps and uh, all the caching thing is very good in this typescript as compared to react so these are two or three main usps <clears throat> now coming towards next question Uh, what is your experience with security implementation is in both front end and back end yep so when i was working with that company uh, i encountered so many security issues so there are so many ways to like munstack is not that much safe right so you need to implement so many multiple security layers to make that project very safe so uh, in that one company we were uh, i guess implementing two or three layers of security so the first thing is that uh, whenever you like you guys might have used jwt tokens so javascript web tokens so whenever while uh, login and authentication you can use jwt tokens which uh, helps you to automatically expire the uh, like volatile informations after that uh, we were using hashing so all the data which are coming from database we were hashing everything and we were decoding everything on the front end so we uh, we were implementing this hashing thing after that we were using https in both the front end as well as back end to uh, make the like uh, all the data uh, secure at the seventh layer of security and uh, apart from that we were also using one or two uh, technical 
things which uh, which were which were improving our security but after some time we removed those things because it was like hindering our speed of api earlier we were having five layer of security but, but because of all these five layer it was getting more and more render time due to which uh, our apis were getting slow so that's why we only uh, like we removed one or two layer of security and after that uh, still that website is live and uh, we never encountered any kind of issues but yeah if you want to learn more about securities then uh, i would highly recommend you to uh, like go with the hashing thing hashing thing improves your uh, content security very much and it helps your uh, like apis like in case if anyone uh, enters into your api then still they can't figure out that what content is traveling through this one api after that we were also implementing api keys so if you want to build a, if you want to secure your apis then you can put some api keys which can only be decoded uh, whenever any person is requesting some data from front end so that api can only access from, end or from any uh, postman or any other uh, api accessing platforms so this was also one layer of security which we were using so there are so these are some very common layer of security which you can implement on your front uh, on back end and front end generally don't require any kind of securities because it's on, already a public layer no one is going to like it's already in the public facing side so there is no any sense of making it that much secure and uh, so far i haven't heard that generally any company tries to make its ui secure right the security security thing generally happens in the database side and in the api side okay after that uh, cms uh, content management system so i'm not having i have heard about it but i have never used it on my personal level so i guess uh, i can't explain more about it anything about it so uh, i would recommend you to go with google and uh, sorry for that after that okay, uh, there is a question about uh, what security related tools have you used in your work and uh, how they have helped you in to improve the security of your application so we were not using any security related tools we were using techniques for improving the security like firstly i told you hashing always hash all the content whatever it is coming from database always put uh, api keys on your api so that only the authorized user can access those apis and after that very general jwt tokens for all the login and authentication things so that uh, no one can uh, like uh, like no one can access those uh, entry points after the expiration time because generally ddos attacks happens uh, in general basis so jwt tokens uh, helps you in that cases also so and the fourth technique is that try to put more number of validations on your post apis because sometimes people put a huge amount of garbage value for uh, crashing your post request apis so these are some techniques which you should use in your project not tools okay uh yeah. what are any more question i guess that's all for the questions i have answered uh, the other questions okay there is one more question how yeah. can you optimize performance using dozer okay i have i guess you have already answered yeah okay that's it so um, yeah uh, if there are any other questions you can just ask us uh, now or uh, if you haven't filled already you can just fill the form um yeah let me just share the form again and uh, that's it from our side uh any other questions you can ask or uh, we'll just wrap this up over to uh madhmita is here i can see her yeah so guys if you have any questions you can ask or unmute yourself okay i hope yeah so thank you so much for this informative and amazing session guys i hope everyone enjoyed and gained much information in full stack development with doser thank you so much once again yeah thank you for having us and thank you everyone for joining in um hope to uh, have more sessions like this right and uh, yeah 
have a great day and uh, enjoy thank you guys uh, it was really a nice nice audience it was having a nice session with you guys bye bye thank you so much anketan hatik bye take care